Hello everybody! Continuing our study of computer science, we now get into digital content. What is it? So we're going to cover the basics today, and next video we will be covering the various forms in which it is, in which uh, uh, numbers, alpha, the alphabet, strings, that sort of stuff is recorded in the binary system. But for now, it's just an overview of digital. What is digital? So the basics. First of all, what is data? Data is the representation of entities using discrete symbols. So what do I mean by entities? I mean an object that is independent from something else. So an entity could be a string of text um, or an image, a video file, a music file, um, a data file, um, uh, even a computer program. Those are the entities that I'm speaking of, and they constitute data. Now, the singular of data is datum. It's not really necessary to know in the context of computer science, but it's good to know that data is the plural. It is the connection of uh, pieces of information that are put together. And then uh, the singular would be datum. In computer terms, though, it, uh, data is not synonymous with information. Information in a computer context uh, um, uh, setting, or in a, in a computer science setting, is the representation of data in human-friendly formats. So for instance, I am displaying these notes here on a PDF. A PDF would be human-friendly format. If I open up the PDF in Vim, in the uh, Vim text editor, what I see is the non-human friendly form. It's what is meant for a computer to read. So usually data is what computers will work on and information is what humans can understand and interact with. Now data has to be uh, set up or composed in such a way that it can be acted upon by a program's or a computer's input processing and output cycle or cycles. And, and going forward, if, if, if you hear me use the word IPO, I'm speaking of this cycle, input, processing, and output. So data representation is the form imposed on data for use in this cycle. There are different ways that data can be represented. Um, uh, of, of greatest importance to us, or greatest importance to us, is the digital data representation. And what is digital? We covered it in a previous in a previous video, but digital, uh, to reiterate, is the sequences or patterns of discrete digits. Discrete meaning that there's a set or fixed number of these values, and the uh, data is, uh, is represented simply by ordering these units or these, these digits in particular patterns. Now we get into the most important form of digital, and that is binary. Binary are the sequences that contain patterns of only two possible states. And states, I don't mean like states of the union. I mean states as in it's either present or it's not present. That would be the case of a one or a zero. So one is presence and zero is absence, but those are two states. Or as we see here in, in some of the examples, so. First of all, we see that it's the most widely uh, used type of digital represent uh, representation. But we have here some examples. We have binary digits. This is representation using zeros and ones. Um, and the unit, whether it's a zero or a one in the binary system, is called a bit. And it's derivative of by it, binary digit, as you can see here, that little section in green the bi of binary and the t of digit. This uh, binary system is almost universal, but it um, just um, a little precursor, a little teaser to our next video. It is the storage medium used by the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or ASCII, and that will be the topic of our next video, which is the, uh, the method by which um, characters such as the alphabet, uh, numbers, um, special characters such as like things like the escape key, the enter key, the return key, those are coded using, uh, using binary digits according to the standard or the ASCII standard. 
Our second example of what binary is would be DC electronics. And this is signals of 5 volts or 0 volts. And these signals are pulses that are sent over time. So uh, a device or a component that is listening for a digital signal, it would be looking for whether it's uh, what's called a high signal or a low signal. High meaning 5 volts or 0, uh, or zero it's, to be perfectly accurate it's actually negative 0.2 volts so it actually drops a little bit below but anyway what does that look like on if you were to graph a dc electronic signal which would be the example of digital well it would look like the graph here okay so we have uh we need to be able to show the graph according to time so our x-axis, our x-axis is according to time, okay? Our y-axis is voltage. Remember, this is DC, DC signal. Sig, no. Okay. And we have, we only need two markings on here. We're going to say, we're going to do an arbitrary value. We're going to not have the origin starting at zero. Let's have the origin up a little bit high. Oh, so zero is here and five. So our origin actually is in the x direction in the in the uh, x direction or time. It is starting at zero. But let's say that in the y direction we put it at I don't know. This is one, one, two, three, four, five. So let's put it at negative one. So we actually start at negative one, okay? So what is the signal? Well, it is going to be on for a particular amount of time and then off for a particular amount of time. So high, and then it immediately drops down to low, and it would continue for a certain amount of time at zero, and then it would go back up to high and be on as long as it needed to be, drop back down to zero, and then back up to five and back down to zero and then continue at zero for a while and then continue at five for a longer period of time and then off and finally on dot 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 okay so you see here that in this graph this is the signal so let's mark this as being the signal and when it's up, it's at 5 volts. So I forgot to label my y-axis. My y-axis is at is volts, and my x-axis is time. So it's voltage according to time. So the uptime would be one state. The downtime is another state. So for a, a particular, if I were to take these readings at time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So if I were to time in, we'll say milliseconds, time in milliseconds, okay? So at one, oh, let's see, what measurement would that be? Probably like 1.2. So let's say at 1.2, one, or uh, that's almost thirds, isn't it? We'll, we'll do 1.3. At 1.3 milliseconds, our voltage drops so voltage drops drops to zero drops to zero we had a state change state change okay and then at what, that's roughly one, two, three. So at three milliseconds, it then jumps back up to five seconds. So for probably about one, almost two milliseconds, it, it seems like for almost two milliseconds, we had a downtime and then up again for five. And then we were on for about half a millisecond or so, and then down and then off for half a millisecond, up for half a millisecond, and then holding for maybe a whole millisecond or maybe two and then on for three milliseconds, off for half millisecond, 
This is a completely arbitrary example. This probably doesn't mean anything, but you can see how if you can control whether voltage is on or off, if you pulse, if you pulse this, uh, this signal and you have it uh, uh, occurring according to some sort of pattern, then you end up with, uh, with a signal that makes sense. You can interpret and you can build robots, run servos, all sorts of things anything that requires a DC signal. So that would be an example of that would be an example of digital in the context of DC. What's our next uh, our next uh, form that it could take? Well, we have optical. An optical is in the form of uh, CDs or DVDs. Um, in fact, even if you were to have someone shining a flashlight across a valley and you had it according to um, a predetermined set, so like three short flashes and then a long flash or a long flash and three short flashes, that would be another example of digital. And then finally, magnetic. Magnetic uh, in the digital context, the reason why we can use digital uh, when we're speaking actually binary is because um, ma ma magnetism can either be positive or it can be negative. So if you have particles that can take a charge and hold on to that charge in the case of uh, magnetic uh, disks or hard, hard drive disks um, or in the old days of cassette tapes or um, VCRs, this was a magnetic particle and you simply could set the charge, whether it was positive or negative. So three forms of, we have th uh, three forms of binary that uh, will be discussed later in this chapter, and that is um, binary digits, um, uh, yeah, binary digits, uh, optical, and magnetic, or actually uh, electronic, magnetic, and optical. Now we, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time with analog, but at least we want to know how does it differ or why do we have to speak of digital? Well, we have to speak of it as uh, compared to analog. Analog are the sequences that may contain patterns of an infinite set of values. So uh, some examples of this, as we've spoken of before, but a vinyl record. And the reason why vinyl is analog is because there's an infinite variability in groove depth and contour. So the way that a vinyl record works is you have grooves that are cut in a very specific way into um, into the vinyl or the the plastic um, disc. And then when you are running a uh, uh, a playback needle through these grooves, it travels through and it's vibrating. It, it it's uh, it's uh, sending an electronic signal according to the movement of the needle. Well, you can already see. Let's say, for instance, that you have dust put in there, or 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 you can record in in such a way that the contour is just a little bit different from the other one. And you can see you don't have absolute control over all of the contours in the groove. Therefore, it is an analog record. Then you have uh, physical art mediums and film. In, in art, such as painting, if you're painting in oils or acrylics, you have an infinite number of color combinations, uses of light, shadow, um, even the where you place your lines, the, it, it, the choices are infinite versus um, a computer has a set of color values that it can work with. I believe it's 250, what is it? Oh, something, it has to do with 256, but it's a, it's, it's a multiple. It's a very high number of colors that can be coded, but we know exactly what those colors are and they can be immediately reproduced. You can't produce the exact color every single time in the physical art medium. There are too many factors. And then film. If you are taking um, a, a photograph with a film camera, the light comes in, it shines on the negative, you know, exposing a portion of that, uh, of that uh, uh, medium. And then when you go to develop the film, right? Uh, that whole process is very is very analog. You have 
an infinite number of variables, things that could happen. Temperature could be different. Um, your solutions might not be the exact same. Uh, the, the light could have been different. All these different variations that create an analog result. And our final example are dial readouts. So if you have, let's say, for instance, air pressure in a, in a um, air compressor, that dial can move at an infinite number of degree values, right? Go from zero all the way as high as the dial can read. But at any one point, it could be sliding in between the different readouts. It doesn't jump from one readout to the other. And because it can be in an infinite number of places, we are uh, at uh, infinite or uncountable, depends on the way you look at it, then that would be an example of analog. So moving on then. So that's our analog versus digital. So now we have this information in a digital format. We have these patterns that we can store. Um, but what, what if, what if we, or how do we record it? We record it uh, according to a process of digitization. Digitization. This is the recording or storage of data in a digital format. And it can be used of both retroactive conversion of stored analog information. So this would be an example of taking, taking um, a film photograph and scanning it into your computer that you've converted an analog piece of data into digital data. You can record, uh, you can convert a vinyl record into, into a CD or into an MP3 format. That would be an example of digitization. But also, uh, another aspect of digitization is just the capture of real-time information. So, as I'm speaking to you, I am essentially taking a bit of real-time um, data, which is my presence in this room, my speaking to you, uh, and I am capturing that in a digital format. Okay. Now you store digital information in uh, uh, digital information in a digital file, or just file for short, and this is a uniquely named reproducible collection of data and it's reproducible because it can it's stored on one of the above mentioned digital storage mediums namely magnetic optical or binary so for instance i am recording this uh, and it is it is going to a file it is recording to a file as i speak and it is being stored in a binary it's being stored in a binary format because I'm using a, a solid state drive. If I were recording to a hard disk drive or HDD, if you've um, heard of that before, versus SDD, SDD is solid state drive that uses electronics, that's purely binary, and uh, versus HDD or a hard disk drive, and that would be magnetic. So I would be setting the states of magnetic particles that are storing the information that I am recording at this moment. And then optical would be if once I was done making the video, I then burned it to a DVD. That would be uh, a transfer of information from a, an electronic file or a magnetic file and, and then converting it into an optical storage medium, but it would still be the same file. It would still be the same named collection of data. And then uh, one more aspect of this file is that it can have various formats, and a format indicates the type of data and the method of encoding. So the type of data that is used to create an MP3 or a uh, music player, I, I don't know what MP3 stands for exactly. I'm sure we'll be covering it later in the video uh, or in in future videos. But suffice it to say that um, the format, the, the extension, uh, MP3, is used of music. MP4 is used for video. Uh, PDF is used for files, for printable documents. Um, uh, you have .cpp files are used for the computer, uh, the computer programming language uh, C++. .py is used for Python. Um, what else? Uh, 
dot zip is used for a zip file which means like a it's like a it's like a library that has been closed up so it's a nice efficient way to transfer information and store it in a compressed format uh, dot png uh, dot was it dot uh, gimp it, or was it dot x something for the uh, gimp um, photo editor so many um, and e each of those each of those forms of data is going to be different from the others. It's stored in a different way. The computer works on it a, a, a different way. It's been encoded differently. And it's denoted by, so, uh, so various formats are denoted by the file name extension. And this is a sequence, a specific sequence that is unique to that particular uh, um, file format. And it's, uh, so it's a sequence that's preceded by a period which may be appended to the file name. So sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't, but that is the way that you can determine the difference between the extensions. All right, so that concludes our uh, introduction to digital content, and our next video will be on the representations. How exactly are numbers uh, um, denoted in, in a digital context? How are how are letters um, uh, shown in a digital context? Um, so I look forward to working on that next time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. And uh, if you like this sort of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. Um, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining me and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.